Eighth grade open up resources illustrative mathematics. Unit 7 lesson 5. Negative exponents with powers of 10. Problem number 1. Write with a single exponent. A. 1 tenth times 1 tenth times 1 tenth. Written with a single exponent, that would be equivalent to 10 to the power of negative 3. B. This time, 1 tenth is multiplied by itself 7 different times. So this is going to be equivalent to 10 to the power of negative 7. C. Inside the parentheses, we have 1 tenth times 1 tenth times 1 tenth times 1 tenth. That's 4 different times. Outside the parentheses, we have to the power of 2. So that means we need 2 sets of 1 tenth times itself 4 different times. That's a total of 1 tenth times itself 8 times. Because 8 is 2 groups of 4. 1 tenth to the power of 8. Written as a single exponent, that would be 10 to the power of negative 8. D. Inside the parentheses, we have 1 tenth times itself 3 different times. And outside the parentheses, we have to the power of 3. That means we need 3 groups of 1 tenth times itself 3 times. That's a total of 9 times. Written as a single exponent, that would be 10 to the power of negative 9. E. 10 times 10 times 10 inside the parentheses, and outside the parentheses is the power of negative 2. That's equivalent to 1 over 10 times 10 times 10 to the power of 2, which is two groups of 1 over 10 times 10. So that would be 1 over 10 times 10 times 10 times 1 over 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1 over 10 to the power of 6. Written with a single exponent, that would be 10 to the power of negative 6. Once again, 1 over 10 to the power of 6 is equivalent to 10 to the power of negative 6. Problem number 2. Write each expression as a single power of 10. A. 10 to the power of negative 3 times 10 to the power of negative 2. We can rewrite that as 1 tenth times 1 tenth times 1 tenth. That represents 10 to the power of negative 3 times 10 to the power of negative 2. 1 tenth times 1 tenth. Altogether, we have a total of 1 tenth times itself 5 different times, which is equal to 1 over 10 to the power of 5. Written as a single power of 10, this would be 10 to the power of negative 5. A quicker way to do it would be to add their exponents. Negative 3 plus negative 2 equals negative 5. So 10 to the power of negative 3 times 10 to the power of negative 2 equals 10 to the power of negative 5. B. 10 to the power of 4 times 10 to the power of negative 1. Remember, the quicker way would be to add their exponents. The power of 4 plus the power of negative 1. 4 plus negative 1, or 4 minus 1, equals 3. So 10 to the power of 4 times 10 to the power of negative 1 equals 10 to the power of 3. C. 10 to the power of 5 over 10 to the power of 7 equals, on the top of the fraction, 10 times itself 5 different times, and on the bottom of the fraction, 10 times itself 7 different times. 10 divided by 10 equals 1, and 10 divided by 10 equals 1, 10 divided by 10 equals 1, 10 divided by 10 equals 1, and 10 divided by 10 equals 1. What's left is 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 on the top, which is 1, and 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1, times 10 times 10 on the bottom. That's the same as 1 over 10 times 10, or 1 over 10 to the power of 2. To write this as a single power of 10, would be 10 to the power of negative 2. D. Inside the parentheses, 10 to the power of negative 4, and outside the parentheses, the power of 5. That means 5 groups of 10 to the power of negative 4, or 10 to the power of negative 4 times itself 5 different times. We can add the exponents. Negative 4 plus negative 4 plus negative 4 plus negative 4 plus negative 4, and that's a negative 20. A shortcut would be to multiply the power of negative 4 times the power of 5. Negative 4 times positive 5 equals negative 20. This expression, written as a single power of 10, would be 10 to the power of negative 20. E. 
10 to the power of negative 3 times 10 to the power of positive 2. Remember, since they have a common base number, in this case, their bases are 10, we can add their exponents. Negative 3 plus a positive 2. And that equals negative 1. To rewrite this expression using a single power of 10, we would write 10 to the power of negative 1. F. 10 to the power of negative 9 over 10 to the power of 5. That's equivalent to 10 to the power of negative 9 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Now they have the same base number, and we can add their exponents. Negative 9 plus a negative 5. That's a total of negative 14. So when we rewrite this expression, we can write 10 to the power of negative 14. Problem number 3. Select all of the following that are equivalent to 1 over 10,000. Let's look at A. Inside the parentheses you have 10,000. Outside the parentheses you have a negative 1. 10,000 to the power of negative 1 is equivalent to 1 over 10,000. So I would select A. Let's look at B. Negative 10,000. No, because negative 10,000 has the value of negative 10,000, which is different than 1 over 10,000. C. Inside the parentheses, we have 100. And outside the parentheses, we have the power of negative 2. And that's equivalent to 1 over 100 to the power of positive 2, which is the same as 1 over 100 times 100. And since 100 times 100 is 10,000, then I would select C. D. Inside the parentheses, we have 10. And the exponent on the outside of the parentheses is negative 4. 10 to the power of negative 4. We could make that a positive exponent by placing it on the bottom. Now it reads 1 over 10 to the power of positive 4. Since 10 to the power of positive 4 is 10,000, then I would select D. Because 10 to the power of negative 4 is equivalent to 1 over 10,000. And finally, E. Inside the parentheses, we have negative 10. And outside the parentheses, we have to the power of positive 2. That represents negative 10 times negative 10, or negative 10 squared. Since a negative times a negative is a positive, and 10 times 10 is 100, the value for E is 100. So I would not select E. Problem number four from eighth grade unit three, lesson two. Match each equation to the situation it describes. Explain what the constant of proportionality means in each equation. I can match equation A, Y equals 3X, with situation two. I am making a water and salt mixture that has two cups of salt for every six cups of water. We have cups of water and cups of salt. There are six cups of water and two cups of salt. Two divided by two equals one. That makes one cup of salt. And six divided by two equals three. That makes three cups of water. For this situation, I have three cups of water for each cup of salt. So for this equation, Y could represent the amount of water and x represents the number of cups of salt. When x is 2, 3 times 2 equals 6, or the number of cups of water. When x is 1, the number of cups of salt, 1 times 3 equals 3, the number of cups of water. Equation B could match situation 4. For every 48 cookies I bake, my students get 24. There are the cookies I bake, and the cookies my students get. When I bake 48 cookies, my students get 24 cookies. 48 divided by 48 equals 1. 24 divided by 48 equals 1 half. When the number of cookies I bake is just 1, my students get 1 half. This means for every cookie I bake, my students get half. If I baked 48 cookies, my students would get half of 48, which is 24 cookies. Equation B matches with situation 4. Equation C is a match with situation 1. A dump truck is hauling loads of dirt to a construction site. After 20 loads, there are 70 square feet of dirt. There are the number of loads and square feet of dirt. When the number of loads is 20, 
The square feet of dirt is 70. Divide both of these by 20. 20 divided by 20 is 1, or 1 load, and 70 divided by 20 is 3.5, or 3.5 square feet of dirt. So for every one load, there's 3.5 square feet of dirt. The dump truck hauls 3.5 square feet of dirt in each load. So equation C matches with situation one. Let's look at equation D. Equation D matches with situation three. A store has a four for $10 sale on hats. We have the number of hats and the amount of dollars. When there are four hats, the price in dollars is $10. Divide both sides by four. Four divided by four is one or one hat, and $10 divided by four is 2.5 or $2.50. That means that hats cost $2.50 each. Again, equation D matches with situation one. Problem number five from eighth grade unit two, lesson eight. A. Explain why triangle ABC is similar to triangle EDC. Both triangles contain a right angle, and angles ACB and ECD are vertical angles. The triangles are similar because two pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. B. Find the missing side lengths. We can use these two corresponding side lengths to help us find the missing side lengths. 39 over 26. That's the same as 39 divided by 26, which is 1.5 or 1 and a half. That means that the scale factor is 1.5 or 1 and a half. Length CD is 1 and a half times longer than length BC. And length DE is 1 and a half times longer than length AB. 1.5 times 10 is 15. So side DE measures 15 units, and 36 divided by 1.5 is 24. So side BC measures 24 units. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.